Hello all, welcome to the Northern Electric Vehicle Experience. My name is Ron and I am your host. The Northern Electric Vehicle Experience is a podcast dedicated to answering your questions about EVs and the world around them. Speaking of questions, I've been uh, asking you listeners to uh, ask me your questions. Let me know what you think of the show and, and let me know what you want to know about. Jason from Scarborough, he sent me a message and he he asks, I live in a condo with no charging stations. I know one option is paying to get one installed, along with the electrical and all that. Uh, hoping you can discuss pricing and other considerations. Jason also goes on to ask what other options he has. Well, there's a lot in there. So there's a whole episode in there. And that's what today's episode is going to be about. And that is multi-unit residential charging. It is a prickly subject. Um, it is quite, it's not impossible, but it is quite difficult to set up electric vehicle charging for multi-unit buildings that were not designed to have it. This is why uh, people like me and other electric vehicle advocates are trying to pressure governments all over the world uh, to change the flipping building code. It's not that hard for a builder when they're building new homes, condos, apartment buildings, uh, commercial buildings. It is not very hard for them to add electrical to that grand construction. It does cost money. It is not free. But in the grand scheme of things, it also isn't a lot of money or a lot of complexity. Uh, it is much more complex, much more difficult to retrofit it after the fact. So it is completely unconscionable for new homes, apartment buildings, condos, and commercial buildings to be built in this day and age without pre-wiring for electric vehicle chargers. I'm not saying they need to put EV chargers in every single stall, but what they need to put is the electrical to, to provide it. In the case of a condo, ideally, it should be geared back to the units that are associated with those parking spots. Other option, just provide power off of the building's general service and then have a company like you know, ChargePoint or Flow or one of the multitude of others to install electric vehicle charging into the building at a pay-per-use system. The best way generally would be for the condo itself uh, to install the charging, put it on their own power supply, and then charge you back for the cost of the installation and the power. Uh, that would usually be in a, in a per minute, per hour rate. Um, they could probably take advantage of government loans and incentives to do this. They aren't always there, but they do come back around periodically. Uh, in Canada, the federal government brings programs in usually once a year um, to put in electric vehicle charging into multi-unit residential. Um, some cities and provinces also offer some funding. It doesn't pay for it all. Uh, but it takes a bit of the sting out of the cost. Uh, and the reason I say it's better for the condo itself to provide it, because there's a lot of electrical complexity in wiring back to a condo, unless it's like condo townhouses or something. Um, if it's a condo building, it, it, it makes much more sense to bring in, unless you have enough power there, bring in a separate service, power the entire buildings parking garage off of that separate service and then as people get electric vehicles like sorry you're bringing power to each stall and you're putting a cover plate there there's no it's not literally wired with a charger as each homeowner parker uh, gets uh, ev charging or gets an ev then the condo will add a charger to that um, there's usually a payment gateway, and then the condo owner will pay, you know, two bucks, two fifty a minute, whatever is deemed appropriate for not a minute, <laughs> uh, an hour, whatever is deemed appropriate for um, for charging 
uh, their vehicles. Uh, another way, now that can be expensive because you're wiring out an entire parking garage. Not super expensive in the grand scheme of things, especially if you can get a grant, but it does cost money. An interim measure would be to take a bank of parking, like visitor parking, spare parking, add some parking, whatever, and set up half a dozen chargers uh, on that same system that is, uh, you know, pay per use. And then condo owners that do drive electric can go in there to charge and then they can go park in their own spot. It typically takes, if you're a modern electric vehicle and you're dead empty, you're like, you know, you got 10, 20% left in your battery, you're talking seven, eight hours to charge it as a decent 7.2 kilowatt charger. They could also put in 11.2 kilowatt chargers, so that's a bit faster to cycle them through a bit quicker. Not all cars can take advantage of 11.2 kilowatts. Most of the newer ones can. Uh, but uh, older ones like mine, it kind of maxes out at 7.2. But that's neither here nor there. The The car and the charger will talk to each other, and uh, they'll make sure you get... Uh, the correct amount of power for your vehicle. You will not damage your car by plugging it into the charger. As long as everything is working as it should, they'll talk and they'll deliver the right amount of power. Let's see, what are some of your other options? Those are the, the main options for an existing building. Um, I kind of covered over the idea of uh, new buildings being pre-wired. Again, that would be the power would go to all the parking spots. Each parking spot would have a proper receptacle to put a charger into. Again, makes so much more sense. It is a fractional cost for the constructor to put that in, added to the entire building. It is an incredibly big cost to add after the fact. Talk to your political representatives. Don't care what party they're from, what they represent. If you believe in electric vehicles, you live in multi-unit residential, and you want to be able to charge them, pressure them to change the building code. It's not that big a thing. Failing that, you've got some other options. There is a big push to electrify workplaces. And a lot of workplaces now are actually adding electric vehicle chargers. It isn't too big a deal for most workplaces. They have parking lots. They usually have ample power. It's not a lot of money anymore to, to put in charging, depending on how far away they are from power. Um, and if they have to add you know, transformers, panels, or anything like that, that would increase the cost. But most commercial properties have panel space. If it's not too far away from the, from the panel, you're looking at probably a couple thousand dollars ahead to put, put them in, and you as a building owner, um, it sounds like a lot of money, but pretty soon that'll get recouped. If you've got one or two or 10 employees that are interested in buying an EV, do a little survey amongst your employees. Who's interested in an electric vehicle? Would it, would it make it easier for you to buy an electric vehicle if there wasn't a place to charge at work, et cetera, et cetera? If that's the case, and you've got a survey that says, yeah, 10 of your, or 1%, 2% of your employees, 10, 20 people would buy an electric car, even one person would buy an electric car, then it's worthwhile to put the charger in if they need it. Because a lot of people live in existing multi-unit residential buildings that cannot or will not or cannot afford to put in charging infrastructure at their buildings. So then it makes much more sense to have that charging at work. You will recoup your costs. If you figure it costs a couple of thousand dollars a head, and it costs you X number of dollars uh, an hour or cents an hour to charge the average car, and you're looking at in Canadian dollars, you know, you're looking at less than a buck, depending on the workplace. Some places maybe a buck and a quarter uh, per hour to to charge up a vehicle, depending on the car, depending on the charger. You know, you're not talking big money. Charge $3 an hour. 
you're going to recover the cost of the power, you're going to over time recover the cost of the installation, and you're going to have a pool of money there to upgrade and replace in the future. And your employees will happily pay that kind of money. Don't get exorbitant, but you don't have to give it to them for free either. You could do it at a, at a cost recovery basis. Um, you could subsidize it if you so choose. Uh, a lot of companies are having a hard time hiring employees right now. If I was an electric car driver and my employer or prospective employer had electric vehicle charging, that would be a tick in the right box for me to go work for that employer. It also helps with uh, with companies' uh, climate change plans. It shows proactiveness and will help the transition to electric vehicles. Cost-wise, Jason wanted me to cover that. It is so varied. The equipment equipment for um, uh, electric vehicle charging with a payment gateway, you know, you're looking at anywhere from twelve hundred bucks to to like a few thousand dollars, depending on the type of equipment. Um, twelve hundred bucks to fifteen hundred bucks is not at all uncommon, and that usually includes the software for the payment gateway so that um, people can actually pay for what they use at your charger and they can be restricted from using the charger uh, unless they pay. Uh, typically speaking, the charge company itself, whether it's Siemens, EV Duty, ChargePoint, Flow, whatever, um, they will charge a percentage on top of the charging in order to uh, cover things like credit card costs and they want to make a profit, that kind of thing. It's usually three, four, five points. And then the balance gets uh, uh, given to the condo or building owner um, uh, to to their directly to their bank account on a schedule. So maybe it's every time it gets over $100 in fees that it deposits or every month it deposits or some schedule like that. Public charging, a.k.a. fast charging, that's getting more doable. Uh, with my car, to fast charge my car to 80% because it's almost five years old, it takes the better part of an hour to get to from really low to 80%. That's because my car's uh, DC fast charging ability is severely limited um, compared to new vehicles. You've got new vehicles like the Hyundai Ioniq 5, Kia EV6 um, that will charge to 80%, which is well over 300 kilometers in 18 minutes at an appropriate charger. That is stunning. That is now you're talking real speed. That is where you can buy that vehicle, have a home where you can't uh, charge readily, uh, or or an employer that doesn't provide charging. You can actually stop at an appropriate fast charger on your way home or on your way to work, and you can go to 80% in the time it takes you to go into Timmy's and get a coffee. That is really fast. That is a game changer, and it is only getting better. More and more new cars are having similar rates of charging. Now we need more chargers capable of providing that uh, that power. So anyways, you're looking at those scenarios. Uh, fast charging can work. It can be great. Oh, don't mind my uh, phone. It just dinged uh, with one of my favorite podcasts, which is Emma Cruz's. She's a British uh, podcaster, uh, vlogger, and uh, she talks about the cruising industry. It's her passion, and uh, it's a very good uh, podcast. But I forgot to turn off the off of the sound, so I apologize for that. What else can I tell you about this scenario? Um, so, Jason, I think you can. You really have to look at a few things. Talk to your condo board. What are they thinking? What are they doing? Do you live in a condo that is like a, 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 a townhouse condo? Uh, do they have power available at your, your parking space in the garage? Do you just have to buy a charger and have it wired up? If that's the case, then by all means, get her done. 
that won't cost you a ton of money. If they've got the power to to your parking spot and it is charged somehow back to your unit, then all they should be doing is saying, uh, okay, plug in your, uh, your charger and you're off to the races. Now, if it's your charger and you own it and all they do is provide you a plug, in that case, I would suggest you get a smart charger that is capable of restricting who gets to use that charger because it is an underground parking garage or whatever, a public parking garage, and you don't want everybody and their uncle charging off of your charger. So if you buy a smart charger, you can restrict its use depending on the brand um, so that no one else can use it but you or the people you authorize. Um, you could be kind. You could also get a, uh, a charger with a payment gateway. and You can let other people in your building, if your condo board is okay with it, charge at your charger. You could uh, make an arrangement with other people in your building so that uh, if you only need to charge once or twice a week, then you can work out with Bill and Mary that they uh, they charge on the other days of the week and you char you park in their in their spots and you could recover enough cost there to uh, recoup your investment. Um, so there's lots of options. Be creative. Talk to some of the companies out there. I can't tell you what electricians will charge because they'll have to come in and uh, look at your physical situation and quote it out for you. If you have a house, like a, say you're a condo a townhouse and your board lets you just hook into the panel and put a charger there and you just bear the cost and that's all there is to it. Depending on where your panel is, if your panel's in the garage, you're talking a few hundred dollars to put in a plug. If it's on the other side of the exact wrong corner of the house and you've got a finished basement, it could cost a small fortune getting across. In most instances, it can be usually done for under a thousand bucks. Hell, most instances under 500 bucks. Because all they're going to do these days is they're going to bring into your garage or outside of your garage a receptacle for you to plug your charger into. Then you buy the charger, you plug it in, you mount it yourself, or you get the electrician to do it for you. Does that answer your questions, Jason? I hope so. Um, if not, by all means, uh, you have my email. Write me back, and I will answer your questions directly. And to all of you out there, take Jason's lead. If you have questions, please send them to me so I can uh, answer them in in the show. Uh, sometimes it's a whole show's worth of of conversation, but other times it's just a quick uh, a quick answer, one or two lines. If this becomes a regular thing where more people are, are sending me mail, I might have a mailbag edition from time to time where I just answer all questions. I think I've blathered on long enough. I try to keep these things under 20 minutes, and I'm already at 22 minutes and 14 seconds. So we will call it a day. And I want to thank you very much for listening, and I hope you tune in again next time. Have a great day. <laughs>